Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Cat, And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 184, Rang di Basanti, which is a comedy drama from 2006. This has an 8.2 on 103,235 votes. So the mystery line from... The Passion of Joan of Arc was, I see dead people. We did have someone get this correct. This is his second time getting a line correct. This is Amend the End. So congratulations to you. And the movie was The Sixth Sense, which is on our list. Between Fargo and No Country for Old Men. So congratulations to Amend the End. He said this one was super easy. I'm like, of course it is. It is. <laughs> this one's so easy. But yeah, so congratulations to him. So our new mystery line uh, is going to be roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The inner geek in me was like, oh my god, yes. All right. So the spoiler-free synopsis. After a group of friends graduate from Delhi University, they listlessly haunt their old campus until a British filmmaker casts them in a film she's making about freedom fighters under British rule. Although the group is largely apolitical, the tragic death of a friend owing to local government corruption awakens their patriotism. Inspired by the freedom fighters they represent in the film, the friends collectively decide to avenge the killing. Yeah. In a sense, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to apologize in advance. These are not easy names to say, so if I butcher them, I apologize. I do. I'm sorry. In advance. So uh, this is directed by Rakesh Omprakash Mehra. Who has also directed uh, Delhi Six, Ox, and Bollywood, the greatest love story ever told. And this stars Amir Khan, Soha Ali Khan, and Siddharth. And we've seen one of them before, actually. We've seen yep. Amir before in our very first one, 250 in PK. Yep. Because he's PK. Yes. So, the ratings. On IMDb, 33.9% of users rated this out of 10. And then it just kind of went down from there. It literally was just like one of those pyramids, like an upside down pyramid. It was kind of cool. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, there is no Metacritic for this one. Rotten Tomatoes has an 83% on six critical reviews. Jaspreet Pandahar, is a fresh, accomplished and universally appealing, this is the way Bollywood films should be made. I don't know if I can agree with that. Seeing as how I've seen four of them, I don't really <laughs> want to speak to that. <laughs> I mean, the ones that we've seen, we can speak to. Yeah. This is the fourth one, so, I mean... Yeah. So, Pam Tarat. The performances are fantastic, and as an ensemble, they complement each other beautifully. I can agree with that. I liked the acting for the most part in this. Yeah. I, I, can, I can say that. I can. So, there was only one rotten. G. Allen Johnson... The simple-minded presentation ultimately makes it ring hollow. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I don't know about that, but... Maybe. <laughs> we'll get into it in a little bit. <laughs> so, there is no consensus on this one. So that's all for ratings. For the money, I couldn't find the budget, 
But it's opening weekend. It made $701,666. Domestic gross made $2,197,694. Internationally, it made $6,649,000 for a worldwide total of $8,846,694. Its top lifetime gross is 6,872. For awards, this won 30 awards and had 20 other nominations. So I just picked a couple of categories or like a couple of awards that seemed to be big or at least one of them seemed to be big. Um, Cause I didn't want to read 30 awards. <laughs> and most of them were the same, so. The annual Central European Bollywood Awards in India. Best Supporting Actress, Soha Ali Khan. And then this one seemed like the biggest kind of awards for India. Awards of International Indian Film Academy. It won for Technical Excellence. Best Screenplay, Best Art Direction, Best Background Score, Best Cinematography, Best Editing, Best Song Recording, Best Re-Recording, Best Sound Recording, or no, just Best Re-Recording. Then the Popular Award was Best Sound Recording, Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Soha Ali Khan, and then Best Music Director. And then also Best Picture for Popular Award. So, most of the other awards were pretty much all of those as well. It won quite a few. And I, um, the Soha Ali Khan, she won quite a few of Best Supporting Actress. I but can that's, see it. Yeah. I think she was, um, Sonia, right? Yes. Yeah. So, that is that. So, initial thoughts. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Okay. Um, I thought it was okay. Uh, my big time thing is time length for this one. Yeah. It's, it's more like 240 something. Two hours and like 40 minutes or something like that. Yeah. And I felt like. 47 minutes. I feel like those 47 minutes could have been cut out. I felt like some of that part was just like excessive and I'm like, okay. There's a lot. I mean, yeah, you're trying to show the relationships with them, like, you know, bonding and everything, but it was kind of getting ridiculous after a while. And I'm like, okay, let's move this along a little bit, please. I'm like, isn't this supposed to be about, like, you know, a person making a film? And it didn't really, I'll say that, didn't really show it that much in the movie. It's like, and I felt like, I'm like, yeah, the main, like, you think, like, the main focus is her going to, you know, make this movie. And then there's this other thing that happens. But then all of a sudden everything just changes. And so I just felt like there was a lot of, like, confusion going on with this movie about, like, what it should be completely about. Okay. I did like some of... I did like the acting for the most part. I did. Um, the music was a little off for me, I will say, with some parts of it. Like, I felt like some music didn't fit well with some scenes, but then sometimes it did fit well. Um, <laughs> this is a typical thing when we've... This is, like, our fourth one, and it's the CGI still. Yeah. It's still the CGI, and some of the special effects, I admit, are, especially, I'll say, with some blood, I I can obviously tell it wasn't real blood. Yeah. It was pretty obvious. So I'm like, that took it away from me a little bit. But it was nice to see some actors that I've seen before. I'm like, oh, I do remember you from this movie, or yeah. from this movie. So, I mean, this being our fourth one, I'm like, all right, now I recognize some actors. This is cool. So. Yeah, because all of these came out around the same time. So overall, I'm like, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. 
Okay. Um, I actually enjoyed it. I did think it was a little bit long. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot. I will agree, some of the music was just kind of... Okay, why is it? Why is that playing right now? But, I don't know, maybe it's just we don't really know much about Hindi music. So we don't know how he was deciding to put that in there. And then, I really liked the acting. I feel like they all worked really well together. The story was interesting. I think I liked more of the story about the people rather than the story about the filmmaking. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would. Like, I, was I was like, th- like the flashback parts, like the, f- I did like how they ch- you could tell when it was like a flashback to the, the modern day because the like color changed, the color scheme changed. Yeah. To like a, like a browns kind of, so you knew it was older. That yeah, I liked. Like a sepia tone almost. Yeah. Yeah. I liked liked. the transition there. But I definitely liked the story about the friends better than the story about, like, the filmmaking. But I did like how the British girl, uh, Susie, or no, Sue, Sue, how she was able to, like, make friends with them and be incorporated into their friends group so quickly. I just could have done without the filmmaking part, really. But that was the main focus. Come on, Kat. She was there for that it. reason. <laughs> yeah. But that's all I got. For initial thoughts. Me too. That was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. So we start off with the uh, kind of sepia-toned portion. And I was like, oh, is this movie going to be all like this? Because I didn't watch anything or see anything (laughs) about it first. I was just like, okay, this is going to be interesting. We'll see. (laughs) And see, I watched the trailer for this because, you know, I put the trailers up. And I was like, oh, I knew it was going to be. That's me. I didn't. <laughs> so Maybe a good thing. I don't know. They uh, were going through the prison and stuff, and they're taking a man to be executed, and then they... Or they're taking... It actually ends up being three of them they're going to execute, and they do the execution. And then it switches to, like, more modern-day stuff, or, like, 2006 time when this came out. And it's, like, a news building and stuff and sue our main girl here goes to a meeting and she's like talking about the story she wants to tell but the two people she's in the meeting with are like nope we got budget cuts so we're not funding your film and she's like well bye and she's like she's like i'm gonna go to india to make this anyway without your help Pretty yeah. much. And she's like, this is like, because she has the book of her grandfather's diary, and she's like, this needs to be made. Yeah. Because th- what they were telling her is that everybody is more focused on Gandhi at that point in India, at that time, because this takes place at the same time period when, you know, Gandhi is fighting against the British rule in India. These guys are, that she wants to tell the story about is right around that same time. So they're, she's, the people are like, they're more interested in Gandhi than f- random people they don't know. Yeah. As like, we, we already know about Gandhi, so. Yeah, we already watched that movie. Thank you. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it was long. <laughs> Longer than yeah. this one, but you know. Yeah. Not by much, though. I think it was like maybe 15 <laughs> minutes longer. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. But so she decides she's going to go to India to shoot her documentary without any funding. Yeah. She's just going to go do it with her own money. I'm like, how rich is she? That's what I was wondering too. I'm like, okay, so you decide to take a long plane ride to, you know, India and everything. Well, like... she's in she's in London, so it's actually not that long. It's Still. probably the same because she's probably going to New Delhi because that's where they yeah. are, I think. 
So it's probably about the same as us going to like New York or Florida from Denver. That's still is going to be my guess. Three hours. Yeah, but my my thing is a long plane ride is like over five hours. <laughs> Just because I've never <laughs> taken a plane ride over five hours. I have. I've done seven. I've never. I've done a two and a half, and then I've done a three, and then we had two two-hour flights that were broken up in the middle, but that was it. This yeah. is the longest I've done. I've gone from Denver to Hawaii. Mm. That was seven hours. You get a little stir-crazy after a while, I'll say that. But anyways, so she gets to India, and there, obviously she is not from India. She's blonde hair, blue eyes, and so all these guys are, like, trying to give her a ride. They're all the taxi drivers and stuff. They're trying to give her a ride, like, bugging her and stuff. And then her friend walks up and stops all those guys and is talking to her and everything. And they end up taking the last guy that came up and talked to Sue. They take his cab. I noticed that. Um, Yeah. And it's funny. She knows. She can understand exactly what they're saying because she studied Hindi. Yep. It's like, that's important to know. (laughs) Yeah. She does speak Hindi, so she's... Perfectly fine going to India, whereas if I went to India, then I would just be completely lost. Have no idea what's going on. I could say PK. (laughs) That's about all I could say. I don't think that would be a good thing to say, though. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) They'd be like, you just got here. Why are you you already that way? (laughs) (laughs) But, so, she's telling her friend Sonia, which is the one that... Um, met her at the airport there and she's telling her how the show that they were originally planning got canceled and so she's just going to do a documentary and so they go to her new place on campus sue's new place where she's going to stay during the duration of her filming and then we go through the auditions (laughs) and i felt like this is one part that could have been condensed a little bit yeah because we didn't need to see all of these people, especially because she doesn't pick any of them. No. I mean, they're all terrible, so. Yeah. But it's not going well or anything. Then we end up in... Sonia and Sue have gone to, like, this, like, amphitheater that has water. So it's, like, a water amphitheater. Yeah. They hang out here quite a bit. It seems like. And there's two guys way up on the top of this thing getting drunk and then they're just drinking 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 and one of them falls backwards because he drinks too much and leans too far back and this is another spot i noticed like the cgi yeah i did them falling into the water i'm like that wasn't very good (laughs) yeah that was the first one i was like "Mm." (laughs) i was like i know you're really not falling into there but nice try (laughs) yeah because you can see it like you see him fall back, and then it goes to CGI, and then you see him fall into the water after it transitions out of the CGI, and it's just like, you gotta fix that little transition there. Cause <laughs> that was bad. Good. That was bad there. Yeah. But, so they come down, D- DJ is the other guy that was up there, who is uh, PK in our first movie. He played PK. I had to remind movie- myself that he was not PK in this. <laughs> his character name is DJ. Yep, his name. Especially because it's two letters, just like PK. I know. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh. It's gonna throw me off the entire movie. Yeah, but, so... He goes down and he's, like, fascinated by Sue. And... That's the funny... He's, like, telling... He's like, oh, she's super hot and everything. And she is just, like, trying not to laugh because she understands everything he's saying. Yeah. And he doesn't think she understands him. Yeah. So he thinks he can say whatever he wants. And Sonia's just in the background trying not to piss her pants laughing. Yeah. And they're all hanging out, dancing and stuff. And then these, I just called them like traditionalists, like more traditional to Indian culture, really. Rather, whereas um, our main characters here are more of a new age type culture. 
Yeah. So, um, they come up and are, like, trying to scare all the kids off. And then the cops come and everybody leaves. And Sue, we kind of get this, like, little flash between the sepia tone and, uh, regular. Where, because they're driving to wherever the heck they're driving. And Sue's, like, watching DJ. And she sees her main guy... Um, Azad, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that first name. Yeah, but I know. Azad I went... is. <laughs> That's what I went by too. Um, is the main guy in her movie and she sees him in DJ. So she gets this bright idea to ask all of them to be her actors in her movie. So they get to like this little. It kind of reminds me of a little outdoor diner type area. Yeah. That's um, what I thought, too. Like, from Footloose. Uh, not the original one. But the remake? The remake. They have, like, this outdoor diner area. But we're getting... I'm getting distracted. <laughs> this is a really long movie, so you gotta stay on it. So they get there, and this is uh, DJ's mom's place. Yeah, And she's, like, griping at him because he's been gone for so long. He's been gone for, like, two months and hasn't, like, talked to her or anything, so he's he's getting griped at. Oh, I love and, it. And uh, DJ and everybody are introducing Sue to DJ's mom, and Sue just, like, walks right up to his mom and starts speaking almost perfect Hindi to her, and she's like, oh, you're pretty good at that. And then DJ is just completely dumbfounded that she <laughs> understands everything he's been saying. He's like, "Oh shit. <laughs> But it's kind of funny because she doesn't seem to care that he's been saying those things. He, she just finds it funny. Um, and she's like, they're all sitting down to eat and stuff. And she's like looking around the table and then she sees um, all the reflections of like, she's looking at the people and then she sees like people from her movie that she wants to do in all these people. And so she asks them if they would like to be in her movie and then they start making fun of patriotism. And Ajay, Ajay, Ajay however you say that. Yeah. Um, he's like, he is a pilot and he's trying to convince them that it's a good thing to love your country. And Ajay is Sonia's boyfriend. Yep. Just so we can clarify that. Yeah. Because that's kind of important later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but then DJ's like, after they've all said no, DJ's like, don't worry, I'll convince them. But that's like, later on, they're up on the roof uh, going to sleep. And then we see, which one is it? I wrote his name down somewhere. but Karan? Yeah. Like K-A-R-A-N. Yeah. Koran? Koran? Something like that? I don't know. Yeah, Koran or Koran. He is at home. I guess he had went home. And he's talking to his dad. It's like maybe the next day or something because it's kind of light outside. Um, and he's talking to him. And his dad just seems kind of annoyed with him. Do you recognize the dad? I did recognize him, but I don't remember which movie. A Wednesday. Oh, okay. I was looked too. Uh, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's a Wednesday, and I was. Wasn't right. he the? Uh, he's the the commissioner. Cop yes. Head guy. He's the commissioner. Yeah. Okay. His dad's like super frustrated with him because he's not doing things the way that he wants him to. Because they're a richer family. So, of course, you know, sons never do what you want them to do in richer families and movies. Of course not. <laughs> but, um, they get interrupted by a phone call. And so then it jumps to the girls and they are waiting for all the guys to show up. The only one that shows up is Karan. He shows up on time. And, uh... They're like, okay, we'll wear the rest of the guys. And 
the girls make him show them where the guys are. And they're just, like, sitting in this, like, outside food court area watching TV. And eating. <laughs> they're watching models walk up and down the runway. And they're rating <laughs> them, too. Yeah. It's like, oh, that one's an eight. Or, mm, I don't know, that one's lower. Like, really? Yeah. Is, is this what guys do? I don't know. Ugh. Men. But so, they get there, the girls are mad, and the guys are like, oh, we were waiting for Corinne to show up so we could go over there and meet you, and then the girls are like, no, he was on time, you guys weren't. And then they start handing out the roles and stuff. And then we start rehearsals and stuff. And I feel like this is another part that could have been kind of condensed, is the rehearsals. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this could be condensed. Yeah. Um, but they're not really buying into it too much to begin with. They think it's funny and everything. Sue is, like, trying to explain to them why this is important and, like, how to get into their roles and stuff. And they just still are not taking it seriously. So she gets super mad at them. And then, um, she... Uh, DJ says something funny, and then she starts laughing, and then that's the end of that. But there is this one guy who was watching them rehearse. And then they're hanging out at this big, huge memorial. Um, I think it was a memorial for soldiers. I'm just going to kind of skip some parts. Cause... That was, the, wasn't that the martyr, like the fallen Indians or something? Yeah. And they were in this car, and, you know, it was it supposed to be, like, TJ? I was, I was called him PK. That's bad. Um, he was trying to drive the car, but you can totally split. tell he's not driving it at all. Someone else is driving. Yeah. Because it's driving just fine. Yeah. He's I'm not like, just really? driving it with his foot. You're not even making it convincing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, they're all super drunk, but they start dropping everybody off, and... DJ's talking about, he's talking to Sue about how he doesn't want to leave college when he's done. Well, technically, he says he's already graduated five years ago. <laughs> I'm like, what? You're still just hanging out there not doing anything? Yeah. But he says he doesn't want to leave because life gets in the way. And I'm like, oh, how right you are. It's like he's just going to get lost in the crowd. I'm like, boy, I know how that feeling goes. But he just says he does he's scared to leave college, so he doesn't want to. And then he tells Sue that he's scared of acting in her film. And then we see Al Sam. He is not of the Hindu religion. He is of the Muslim religion in India. Yes. So he gets home and his dad is like so pissed off at him for getting drunk. But he's not. Hang yeah, he's not drunk. His dad thinks he is. But then he's like, well, I'm mad at you for hanging out with people that are drunk. He's like, because they don't understand your religion and stuff. I'm like, you don't have to understand their religion to be friends. Exactly. I'm like, Cause, great example here. Yeah, I'm like, I don't do religion at all. And I don't understand religion except for like a little bit. And you are religious. So, and it, not as much as some people, but yeah. Yeah, but still, it's an example. It's a good example. Yeah. But, so his dad's mad, and then his brother is super mad, and then he gets done getting yelled at, and he's, like, done being yelled at, so he runs upstairs, and it jumps, he opens the door, and it jumps straight into, like, a flashback, but now, instead of being just flashbacks, it's also, like, them acting. Yeah. That was a little confusing, I will say that. Yeah, I didn't notice it at first, but then I noticed them, like, looking more like the people, the main people, rather than who they had looked at, like, originally. And I was like, wait a second. Yeah, it was a little confusing. I'm like, wait, is this yeah. the movie? Is this, like, a real flashback? I was a little confused. I will say that. Yeah. But so, the girls are trying to find... There's still one person that they don't have, and that's um, their actor for Bismil. Yes. And so 
the guy that was standing there watching them rehearse one day, he comes up and he's, like, reciting all that these guys did. Like, he knows all about it. And he kind of portrays that he wants to be Bismil. And Sue's just, like, buying it all. While Sonya's over there like, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, he's perfect. Yeah. Then we get another um, movie scene part. Uh, I didn't write down what this one was, so we're just going to skip it because I don't remember. But then Sue is introducing Laxman, saying that he's going to be the new... He's going to be that last person that they need, Bismil. And Aslam's like, um, no. That's not happening. If he's going to be here, I'm going to leave. And so he starts to leave and he kind of gets close to Laxman... And then he, they kind of push each other a little bit. And then DJ like jumps up and goes and starts fighting. And Sue gets super mad. She's like yelling at them to stop fighting. And she's yelling at them because she says all that they want to do. She doesn't know why she even came to a country that all anybody wants to do is kill each other. She's going to go home. She's going to forget all of this. And she just leaves super mad and storms back to her apartment and, like, starts ripping things off the walls and throwing things on the floor. You know, just a big, huge hissy fit. (laughs) Being dramatic. Yeah. She sits on her couch, just, like, crying, holding her grandfather's diary. Yep. And I can kind of understand her fit here a little bit because this, she, like, moves to a completely another country to do this project that she believed in that nobody else believed in and now it's ruined like she found her perfect cast but they can't work together and so she's just devastated that her dream of this film is over i'm like well i can see where you're coming from but then also you just threw the biggest fit in the world (laughs) you're like calm it down a little yeah but she's um you know, sitting there reading her grandfather's journal and DJ comes in and apologizes to her, says that they've talked it out, they've all worked it out, and that they're going to work together and there's not going to be any kind of problem at all. And they want to help her do this movie. So then my guess, because she says something, it's like a narration, like a voiceover, which I don't know why it was there because there's not any other voiceovers Except for, like, her grandfather, and that's just when it's, like, reading the, uh, journal. But this is, like, her voiceover, so I kind of thought it was pointless. She goes, the next four weeks were the best and worst of my life. And I'm like, that wasn't necessary. Like, the only thing that that did is establish a timeline. Which, I guess, is kind of necessary, but with the way they do the next, like, two hours of the movie, you get a timeline. Pretty much. We didn't really need her establishing the timeline or saying it's the best and worst because we will see that it's the best and worst. We see her (laughs) having so much fun. We see her completely devastated. Like, we see all of that. So, that part was pointless. You're like, you're wasting my time. Yeah. But so then the next little bits here, the next like 10, maybe 5, 10 minutes, is they're... Kind of roaming around the New Delhi area, as I'm guessing. Um, And they are going and doing religious practices. And Sue is attending all of this with them. Going and doing religious things. Going and learning all the different kinds of customs. Like, getting more into customs of India, really. Which I liked that as kind of an establishing thing for the setting of... The friendship part. But then I'm like, well, where does this pertain to the film? See? That's the part I was talking about. Earlier. Because, like, some of like, some of it, you know, pertains to the film, but then other parts, it's like, it just pertains to their friendship, like, building their friendship stronger. And me, I preferred the friendship story, even though it was supposed to be about the uh, documentary story. So I was okay with it being there, but then I was also like... Well, we got to get rid of one of them because you're taking up too much time here. Yeah, I would agree. Like, pick one. But we 
we keep seeing them do go to a bunch of different things throughout the country. Well, like in the area for like different customs of India and stuff. And then also seeing their rehearsals. And then we see them messing with costumes, like putting costumes on. And that's kind of a little fun, funny sequence. Doing with the that. mustaches yeah. and the beards. I was like, yeah. okay, there's the PK I've seen come out a yeah. little bit. I yeah. did. I was like, I, I recognize that. And then they are filming the train scene. And it's kind of like a mix back and forth. They mix the flashbacks or like film, film parts with the... Uh, real life and we get a familiar sequence here yes we see the massacre that happened in gandhi yeah i was like i had to go back and look at my notes at gandhi i'm like wait a minute i recognize this yeah <laughs> i'm like it was in gandhi also yeah and we get it kind of at a different angle like a different viewpoint of it which i think is a really good interpretation because the other in Gandhi you know you get the straight on see from behind like the soldiers type thing with this one it's more up close and personal to the people that are getting killed and I feel like this one was a little bit more powerful to me yeah with that massacre they said after this that they say the official count was over 376 people but it, the range is from 376 people to over 1,600. Yeah. So, I was like, Jesus. Yeah. They just don't want to admit how many people actually died. That's no. Um, but then we get a scene. Uh, Karan gets one of his own scenes in the little documentary. He plays Bagat, I think his name. Ba- Bagat Sind. Think. Something like that. Yeah. Same. I just wrote the last name down. I wasn't going to do first names. I'm like, nope. Um, not trying. <laughs> I just wrote down whatever was easiest for me to catch. Yeah. And that was what I saw first. So that's what I wrote down was the bagat. Um, but then they're having breakfast and like talking about the massacre, which we just discussed that. So we're not going to go into it again. I do but love then... the mom giving them the complete and utter guilt. Yeah. Guilt. I was like, oh. This brings back so many memories. I'm like, oh, breakfast time with a side of guilt. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> then they're filming again, and this is the scene where Aslam and Laxman are doing their Khan and Bismil scene. And it's the one, it's where Bismil's like telling Khan that he needs to, like, why don't you just escape and go to Afghanistan where your people are from and he's like my people i was like i'm from here type thing and they're like talking about leaving and they kind of uh con gets kind of upset and stuff and then they start running because they're getting chased by some soldiers and then they get caught um one of them gets caught and then the other one keeps running for a little bit, and then they end up, um, both of the two of them get caught. And then we learn about Azad, who is, like, a master of disguise. And all I could think at this point was, am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle. <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle. That's, That's all what I, I could got, think. too. <laughs> I'm going to be a master of disguise. I'm going to be a master of disguise. <laughs> oh my god, I love that movie. Even... <laughs> and it's not even that great of a movie. It's, it's just so bad it's good. It's exactly, that's exactly what it is. But it doesn't help that Dana Carvey is just like a freaking genius comedian. So he helped the movie so much with that. But we're getting yeah. off track again. <laughs> yeah, so... They had, like, this plan, the military had this plan to get, capture Azad, and it almost works. Almost. He almost gets caught, but then there's a motorcycle chase, and he gets away, and then we see everybody had just watched the movie up to that point. And they're all kind of mellow, really, um, because they 
just watched everything that we have seen, but all in one su- one succession, like one playthrough instead of jumping back and forth between stuff. <laughs> and so, a J shows up and he's like, well, "What's wrong with you guys?" But then they go all hang out and stuff. Then they go to like this old fort, yeah, kind of area, like and a it's ruins place. And there's like an airfield right there. Yeah, like a military base or something. Um, and of course, you know, all the boys except for Ajay go over there and start screaming at the planes, taking their shirt off and stuff. Because why and... not? And they're jumping at the plane too. You know. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're such boys. <laughs> but um, then they come back and. They are just kind of hanging out a little bit, and then Ajay asks Sonia to marry him. And then, I feel like this was a bit unnecessary. Like, we get a little bit of it was probably fine, but we didn't need the full, like, five-minute sequence that follows with all them hanging out and all that stuff. Hanging out, there's... What else did I see? Yeah. Oh, this is also the part where, um, isn't this the part where Sue and DJ kiss? No. No, is that Yeah, that's later. Oh, is, that's at the, the amphitheater thing. Yeah, this later. is where he gives, cause she's cold, you know, plays yeah. the cold act, and so he gives her his coat, I'm like, oh god. Yeah. I'm like, bring your own but- damn coat, woman! <laughs> Jesus! But then, um gets to they are filming another scene and this is Khan and Bishmil they are in jail uh, Bishmil's telling McKinley who is um, Sue's great grandfather that he's not going to stop praying until the injustice in India is over or something like that so um, they start torturing him because they're trying to get him to tell where the others are. And there was one point they were, like, stepping on his hand. But at first, I didn't realize it was his hand because you just saw the brown. Like, they just put way too much blood Yeah. down there. So I thought they were just stepping on poop and he was screaming because they were stepping on poop. And I was like, <laughs> what? And then I realized it was his hand and I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, that does make more sense. Uh, there is yeah. a torture part with the con... That he's tied up on a piece of, and he's naked, on a piece of ice? Yeah, a big piece of ice. And the only thing that I can think is if they put salt down before they laid him on it, because that would hurt. Yeah, I mean, it is not being only... laid on, you know, naked on cold ice. That would probably not yeah. be fun either, but the salt would definitely help. Yeah, I f- feel like they wouldn't have just laid him on the ice. They probably put the salt down. But we don't know because they we don't ever see him pick him up. So I feel like that could have be could have like I guess they needed to show that to show that Khan was getting tortured as well instead of just Bismil. But I feel like just for our sake, it could have been taken out. But why was he naked? He's the only one who got naked. I don't know. But McKinley is at the church and he's praying. He doesn't understand. He's saying that this there's no way that this is God's will. Um, like he's trying to understand. He starts yelling at the, uh, thing, the statue. Because he doesn't understand. And then we get Bishmil and Khan's execution. Oh, and then this is where everybody was watching the film so far. The other one was where they had went to the movies and watched some other film. Yeah. I forgot. Sorry. There's Sorry. a lot of movie watching in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> But then that's when Ajay comes in and he's like, did someone die? And I mean, technically, yeah, because Khan and Bishmil, that's, they just got executed in the movie. So it's kind of surreal at that point, seeing yourself die on screen. Just a little um, bit. But they're all going to go hang out and Laxman doesn't want to, but they're trying to convince him and stuff. And then he does end up going. And so they're at this restaurant all hanging out and stuff and drinking and everybody's still kind of mellow and 
They talk about how nobody's giving a shit about the country except for Ajay because he's like the only one. And then Sonia's like, I care about my country. Like, I want it to be a good country. Stuff like that. And Ajay's calling them all out, telling them that if they think the country's so bad, then why don't they step up and make a change? Like, why don't they try to do something about it? And then they start talking about death, how all of them are just going to end up under a white sheet, except for Ajay. He's going to be um, under the flag, and he'll have a 21-gun salute. And then they s- pick him up and start marching him around like his, um, like he's been brought home under the flag. And it's kind of foreshadowing there. I was just going to say that. Yeah. You beat me to it. Sorry. <laughs> Gross. We do meet, um, after that we go and we meet Ajay's mom. Yep. Because Ajay is going to leave. He's getting deployed. That's what we would call it. Yeah. He's just, like, going out on a mission, really. They don't... I don't know what they say. Because they said it, I think, but I don't remember what it was. I but he's leaving. Either. They're talking about, like, customs and stuff, and Sonia's, like messing with Ajay about it and they're kind of fighting but then they um make up and they're like kissing and making up and it's cute lovey dovey shit all the guys come over and mess with them about it while um Sue is over talking to Ajay's mom about being a spouse slash child of a military person and they're kind of relating over that and stuff um, it goes kind of like a weird flashback thingy. Yeah, like part of the filming again. And it's like this candles and there's like protests and beatings and stuff. And one of the old guys gets killed in the beatings. So all of the guys are upset. The ones that are still alive, they're all upset. And so they decide that they're going to kill uh one of the military guys like i guess one of the head military guys um in the movie and so they're getting their plan together and everything and the execution that the rebels i don't really know what else to call them the rebels plan out um they proceed to do that and then they are talking about how they want to get caught so that way they can have a trial and they get to speak on why they did it. And then... There are some bombings in there, right? Yeah, they, some bombings. They talk about a slogan. It's two words. Yeah. I didn't write it down. I didn't either, but I just knew it was two words. And it was, yeah. like, all over the place after that. Yeah. And then they, in in the real life part of the story, they go and hang out at the amphitheater place. And um, this is also where they're all kind of getting super close and everything. And this is where um, Sue and DJ kiss. And then they're also filming the jail scene where everybody is protesting they're not eating they're fasting hunger strikes says in there 114 days they lasted from the torture and fasting and that's the longest anybody lasted doing something like that and then we get like this devastating news and i feel like this is really the scene where um that actress uh where's her name uh Soha Ali Khan. I feel like this is really where she earned all of her awards. This because part? Because we find out... From now yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. We find out... Because she hasn't really done much up to this. Not really. But they're kind of hanging out. They're listening to the news. And all of a sudden, um, they find out there was a plane crash. They weren't really listening to it. They were just kind of hanging out. And it's on the background. But they hear there's a plane crash. And Ajay died in this plane crash and she just loses it 
Which is understandable. Oh, completely, completely reasonable. I mean, I would do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm sure you would, too. Yeah. Um, but I feel like this, from, like, that point where she hears the news about the plane crash on through the rest of the movie is where she really earned all of her awards because she just does an amazing job with it. Oh, yeah. Not saying that she didn't do a good job before. Like, she was fine before. She just wasn't in it as much. She was there, and she was hanging out, having fun with everybody else, but there wasn't much to it. But, so then it's the funeral, and they're bringing him in. They're carrying him in. And DJ gets to uh, start the funeral pyre. And you just kind of see everybody breaking down. Like, that was one of their really good friends and he just died and so they're all just kind of losing it and it's cool because you kind of slowly see them all lose it because they don't all do it at the same time because it's like they're trying to be strong for each other which makes sense oh it does so um we hear that ajay saved the city like, he saved a lot of lives because he was flying and the plane was going down and it was going to crash into a city. But he stayed in the plane to steer it away. And he sacrificed himself to save thousands of lives. Yeah, but then, of course, you hear on the news, the defense minister is like, oh, no, he was inexperienced, you know. That's the reason yeah. why his plane crashed. And then, like, you hear, like... Ajay's, like, teacher's like, Mentor. uh, no. He had over a yeah. thousand flying hours. Yeah, he was a very experienced <laughs> pilot. He's not a rook. Nice try. It's, it's faulty parts on your planes. Because at this point, he's, like, the 60th pilot to die in these specific types of planes. And then, so there's, like, this memorial. They come up to that memorial, um, the Martyr of of fallen angels and they're they put down they have they were at home when they were listening to that news debate type thing and they've gotten all of ajay's stuff back so they take his picture and his captain's hat i don't know if he was a captain it's his hat oh no he was a, he was a lieutenant but they take his hat and um a bunch of candles and stuff and there's this big group of them and they're just sitting outside that memorial and so of course the news shows up like why are you guys here and they're just there to honor Ajay. They're not really there to start anything. But, of course, it does start something. Because, as Sue put it, I feel like the way she put it earlier was a little bit harsh. But it pretty much plays out perfectly here. Like, the whole country wants to kill each other. So, of course, the, the news comes and talks to him. And... Ajay's mom says that it wasn't Ajay's fault. He was a hero. She's blaming, like, they're all blaming the defense minister. He's responsible for killing Ajay. It's like, and then the police show up. <laughs> and then it turns to some real bad issues. It's like, they're literally, they just come and just, like, drive people and just start beating the crap out of them. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding? They weren't doing anything. Yeah. And, um, Loxman, he's, we kind of see him standing over to the side watching this massacre. And he looks over and he sees, I think it's his father he sees over there. Um. Yeah. His father's just watching. He's not, he doesn't come and help stop anything. He's just watching. And then he drives off. Um. So he's upset, so he goes in, and we get DJ and Sue saving some little kids. DJ goes back in to try and save Sonia and Ajay's mom, and Alam and Suki, I think, are just, like, completely trampled almost. Just everybody is really, really hurt, and then we also see there's one point when we don't see the hit, because I guess somebody, like, walks in front of it. I don't know, but... Ajay's mom does get bludgeoned pretty bad. And so they take her to the hospital. They're not worried about their own wounds. They're just worried about her. They take her to the hospital and she's in a coma now. And the doctor says it's partially because of 
the attack, but partially because of the loss of her son. No, I think part most of it is probably for you know the blunt force trauma to the head. Yeah, I was like, um, people don't really go into comas because they lost their son. They're like super upset about it, yeah, but you know, getting hit in the head is probably the major part of that. But okay, I'm like, okay, whatever, whatever makes you feel better. But we all know it's a blunt force trauma to the head. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we also see Laxman. He goes and talks to his dad, and he's like talking he's like yelling at his dad about why he didn't help and stuff and then his dad starts beating him and so he leaves and then everybody goes to visit Aslam and his father he's like pleading with him he's like I don't want him involved in all of this you guys have got him involved in a bunch of stuff that he has no business being involved in but they let him go in and see him um Laxman does apologize to Aslam for um I'm guessing he was probably pretty critical of him because he was Muslim. Yeah. And so he apologizes for being, like, a huge dick to him. Yeah. So, I'm like, that's a nice touch there. Yeah, I did like that. And this is kind of the part where they've pretty much, at this point, stopped all the flashbacks to the movies. And now it's just the real life part. And so Sue and DJ go back to Sue's dorm room. And Sue's like, will you please just eat? And he just breaks down. This is where we see him breaking down. And um, he's just talking about like how it's not fair, how they're blaming it on Ajay, even though he was so experienced. And how the defense minister is not going to go unpunished and stuff like that. All the guys and Sonia meet up at the old fort. And they're, this is where we kind of get them turning into the characters that they're playing. We get to start to see how they're acting like their characters. And I like how Sonia is the one who's just is like, just kill him. Yeah. I'm like, all right, the only girl in the group's right doing, wanting to do murder. Yep. So they're planning it, and they're like, well, who's gonna pull the trigger? And DJ's going to. Um, Sue sees the new, well, so then they do kill him. Um, Karan drives the bike while DJ shoots the minister on his morning run. The defense minister on his morning run. And then Sue sees the news that the defense minister is dead and she knows something's wrong. So she's like trying to go find all the guys. Like she's trying to find everybody. And then we also see on the news that they had a phone call between Karan's father and the defense minister talking about plane parts. How it doesn't matter. They can just use them. They're faulty plane parts and they're still using them for planes. Sue's still searching, but they're all at some place that we haven't seen before, so obviously she has no way to know that that's where they're at. Um, but they're all talking and they don't know what to do with themselves. And then this is also the part where they say, oh, we're going to turn ourselves in because then we can say what's up. And then they're all like, uh, no, that's crazy. Suki is saying that Kuran always knew what was happening and just never said anything because his father was involved in it. And Kuran's sitting there saying, I didn't know anything about it. And then they come up with a plan, but we don't know what the plan is, so we just kind of think, you know, it's the same as what the plan was in the movie, where they're just going to turn themselves in. And it kind of is. Kind of. Just in a different way. Yes, but uh, I'll go. So DJ drives um, Karan home yep. to talk with his dad, and it seems like Karan's like trying to tell his dad like everything. Yeah. It seems like it. That's all I'm gonna say for now. <laughs> it- but then he also accuses his father of killing Ajay, saying that it's <gasps> his fault that Ajay is dead. Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. No. 
I mean, partially is to blame for it. And you also yeah. see, um, so throughout the movie, you saw DJ's mom had this string tied around her two fingers. And she said she kept the string on because she it was um, something to help keep, keep DJ safe. But then the string broke. Yeah. I'm like, aha, uh-huh, there's a sign. Something's going to happen. Yep. Um, and Sue is on her way somewhere. She's, like, trying to figure out where the guys are because she still hasn't found them. Um, but it looks like the guys are going to go turn themselves in, but then they actually end up at a radio station is where they are. Yeah, because they know somebody there. And Sonia is at the hospital with Ajay's mom. She's not going to be a part of it. She's just going to be there with Ajay's mom when she wakes up, if she wakes up. Which, you know, into the movie she does. Because happy endings, kind of. (laughs) For her. For her. (laughs) She's like the only one. Um, But, so DJ and Karan go into like the recording booth area where the rest of them stay in like a waiting room type area and they get all these people out of the building they're like dj pulled a gun they're like we're not gonna hurt you just leave (laughs) yeah and so karan goes on air on live radio to all of i don't know if it's all of india but it's all of new delhi for sure like that big area and then it ends up being, I think, all of India. And he's telling the story of what happened, of, like, why they did it. Why they killed him. And he's talking about how it's not fair that these people get away with all of this stuff, but they go unpunished, and yet a hero has to die. He saved so many lives, but he gave up his life in the process and they were just trying to avenge their friend's death. And then the radio guy sent like Karan leaves the recording booth and the radio guy comes out and is talking to him. He's like, there's so many people calling. Like they want to talk to you. They want to know what's going on and stuff. All the while the police are coming in, coming to, um, at that point, arrest them is the impression that you get. But then, they get there and you hear them say that they want no survivors. It's like, they're just going to kill them all. I'm like, oh, that's lovely. You know, I was like, that's a little bit um, far. Just a bit. But they they think that they're terrorists because they went into the radio station with a gun and then they also killed the defense minister so they think they're terrorists even though Quran just told the whole country they're not terrorists. Um, but so they start throwing smoke bombs in and DJ's got this bright idea that if he shows them that they don't have any guns, that they're not terrorists, then they'll be fine. But he's like holding his hands up and they shoot him in the arm. Yeah. I'm like, well, there's your sign there. Yep. And then, so him and Suki are trying to run, but Suki gets killed. Suki's just like, Um, just do it. Yeah. He's just like gives up because he knows he's not getting her out gonna get out um then the military guys get all up on the roof and stuff and then we see Aslam and Laxman are together they're trying to they close like this door and stuff and then a bomb goes off right outside the door and it does kind of a flashback between their characters and them And then they die. Then we get this flashback, but not to, like, the filming part. We get this flashback to seeing Karan kill his father. Because somebody asked on the radio, as a caller, they asked him about his father. And he admits that he killed his father. It's like, well, technically he doesn't say it. DJ says it. Yeah, DJ says it. Because he breaks down, he's like, I can't say it. (laughs) Yeah. But DJ's talking and saying stuff, and Sue, at this point, is outside the radio station, and she's about to run in, but she hears DJ talking. He says, I point, think, he's like, I think I'm in love. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. At this point, he's, like, almost dying. Yeah. Because he's been shot so many times. 
and Sue's breaking down, of course, because all of her friends are dying. And um, so she's trying to get into the building to stop them and stop the shooting. But you see kind of at the end here, um, you get that same line from the beginning. The McKinley guy, he says, I used to think there was two, two only two types of people in the world. Those who go into their death quietly and those who go into their death screaming. But then I met the third type who go to death laughing. And the last sh screen you get is of um, Karan and DJ laughing. And then it stops and you just hear shooting. And then it jumps and you see Sue screaming because she obviously knows what's happening. Well, it's on the radio too. Yeah. It's still going. Everyone yeah, can hear on everything. Air, they're, they're killing these people. Um, Ajay's mother wakes up. DJ's mother and father realize what happens because, you know, they were listening to the radio. That's a wonderful thing to hear your child get killed on the radio. Yeah. Um, but DJ's father says something about don't let this not start anything or something. He says it really well. Like, it's a very well-delivered line. I can't remember what the line is, but it's basically, please let this start a revolution. Please let this change something. Don't let his death be in vain. And then we get all the news reports, and it is. It does start a revolution. Um, all these people are talking about how this is, they're gonna try and change things and stuff like that. And then we see Sue and Sonia are hanging out at that old fort. I guess just really trying to remember everybody. Um, yeah, you see, like, then, the boys, like, they're running through the field, the flowers and all that. Yep. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the movie. So, two hours and 47 minutes condensed to an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Ugh. So, the music is by A.R. Raw Man? I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, he is known for Slumdog Millionaire from 2008. Lagan, Once Upon a Time in India from 2001, which also stars Amir, Amir Khan, uh, which... He played DJ in this film and then PK in our first film. Rockstar from 2011. And Jodha Akbar from 2008. Um, the first thing he ever worked on was Sangersh, a TV series from 1991. He's got a lot he's working on right now. Um, Bombay Dreams, 99 Songs. Le Musk, Vic Ram 58, Adu Jivitam, I don't know, Tact, SK 13, Sang Amithra, Ponian, Sel Selvan, and Dil Bichara. Bechara. I don't know. <laughs> Those are all really hard words to say. Agreed. So I'm sorry. <laughs> But he's got a lot going on right now. Um, he has won two Oscars. Both of them were for Slumdog Millionaire. One for original song and then one for original score. Um, we did uh, touch on it a little bit earlier, the music. I felt like the background music, when it was there, was fine. Like it played well into the movie. It was more like the pop type songs that were going on that... I felt like sometimes we're out of place. Because it's just like sometimes it's like a really sad moment and then it starts playing this fun pop song and I'm like, wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> but I don't know because I don't, I didn't, sometimes it put the words of the songs on the screen and then other times it didn't. And sometimes the songs that it didn't put the words of the screen were the ones that I was like, wait, why is it playing this one? So maybe if we had had the translations, it would have made more sense. Because the ones that it put translations for, I feel like it made sense with 
what was going on. But then the other ones that we didn't, I was like, okay, I don't understand. Um, that's all I've got for music, though, unless you have anything. No. Okay. So, I believe this is, um, slight, like, there's some true facts into it in this and then some not true facts in it. Um, I don't know which is which, so I can't really speak to any of it, but so there's not really much comparison we can do on this one. So we will go right into trivia. Uh, it's hard to pick trivia for this movie because it's just like all over the place. <laughs> Where was the one I wanted to say? Oh, but the title means. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wrote that down. Yeah. Uh, the title is means translated, uh, Paint Me With the Colors of Spring. Yeah. I thought that's a nice title. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And it kind of makes sense with, like, the flashback types thing and then the flowers at the end. Um, a little bit rougher of a translation, the one that I found, was Paint It Yellow. So it really makes sense with the, like, yellow-toned flashbacks and then the yellow flowers at the end as well. Well, they're going to make a film like that, The Painted Yellow, because there's going to be a Hindi version and an English version. And the English okay. version is going to be The Painted Yellow. Then those were just dropped completely. But there is English in this movie. There is. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so it's not all in Hindi. Okay. Yeah, there's actually, I was looking, there's actually three languages. Because um, it's Hindi, English, and also... Punjabi, but I can't distinguish Punjabi and Hindi, so I have no idea. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, like the scenes they did, those are the actual like real places they use in you know New Do uh, New Delhi. Yeah, I thought that was really cool that they actually got permission to go there for some of those. Um, especially that one temple they went to with like the gold and everything and you have to put your feet in the water first before you step in oh yeah i think that's really cool that they got to do that um this had to be screened by the government because um well there's a lot of controversy because they're like at the very end of the movie it does say that a lot of these planes were like they did crash because of the faulty stuff and yeah. the government okayed it actually so which i thought was like interesting like oh they are accepting up, that, it okay. 72 people that died because of the planes. That's too many. Yeah. That is way too many. Yeah. As soon as one person dies because of faulty planes, you should start investigating what's going on. Exactly. I'll, I'll end with this one. So, you know how the ending, the where they're at, like, in the radio station and they're just staying there? That wasn't the original part they're going to do. Um, okay. it would, they were actually going to be doing like a running thing, like a chase scene. Oh. But Amir Khan, he rewrote that part. He's like, we should do it like this. So it looks like, oh. um, like the film that she was trying to make. Yeah. That's why. Well, that makes sense. It did look, I liked that kind of flashing between the two. Cause at that point their characters were so similar. Yeah, I just felt that was a good choice instead of, like, them going back through, like, a chase scene. Like, that yeah. wouldn't make sense for how it, it was. Yeah. And that would add more time. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, please, this is long enough. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. Unless you got something. No, I don't have anything for this one. Um, but where it has been on the list before and where it is at today... Uh, 2010 and 2012, it was not on the list. 2014, it was number 147. 2016, it was number 159. 2018, it was number 212. And then as of today, when we are recording, it is number 211. So it came on the list real strong, and now it's just kind of dropping a little bit. Um, previously, number 184 
the 2010 list, I think it's kind of ironic. Uh, Gandhi <laughs> from 1982. That is. The 2012 list. The 400 Blows from 1959. Ugh. The 2014 list. There Will Be Blood from 2007. The 2016 list. Rush Ugh. from 2013. The 2018 list. Into the Wild from 2007. Which is coming up for us in just a few movies. And then as of today when we are recording, Mary and Max from 2009. So that's which is coming up soon. Coming up as well. Yeah. I was like, I love Mary and Max, so yeah. I'm glad it's still on the list. Yeah, it's still there. Just hanging out. Yay. So some trivia for our podcast. Um, this is the only movie so far that we've had from 2006. Which I was kind of surprised. I was like, really? Oh, that is weird. Um, then, uh, like we did say earlier, this is our fourth Hindi movie. And this has the same, in the same area amount of votes as Memories of Murder and Stalker. Huh. Yeah, so that's all of that. So, favorite line? Oh, I got three. Okay, go ahead, because I gotta find mine since I wrote so small. Okay. Um, we need to change ourselves to bring about change. Yeah. With one leg in the past and one in the future, it's no wonder we're pissing on the present. <laughs> and this is probably my favorite one. There are only two ways to live life. Tolerate things the way they are, or take responsibility to change them. Yep, I liked that one too. Um, I think I just have five. But they're all pretty short. So, the first one I have is when... Uh, DJ and Suki are fascinated with Sue when they first meet her. She must have saved my life, too. Because <laughs> Suki gets saved by um, Aslam and Karan. And he's, like, thanking them. And then she, he sees her and he's, he says that. And I'm like, that's kind of funny. Um, any conversation that goes beyond four sentences becomes a lecture. But then the further we get into that movie, we find out he's kind of not a good guy. And I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I have six. I found one more. Will they give us food in jail? Huh. That was right before they thought they were just going to get arrested, not killed. Death doesn't scare us. No country is perfect. You have to make it perfect. And then my favorite one, everything's falling apart and all I can do is watch. Oh. Yeah. Some, some good ones from this movie. I was thinking either that last one you said or one of the last two that I said. I feel like really encompass. Any three of those really encompass this movie. Um, I have whatever at this point I'll let you pick <laughs> I'll do the everything's falling apart and all I can do is watch that's a good one I like it I like it alright what is your rating I just it took me a bit and I was like okay what am I gonna rate this I had it between like a 5 and a 6 and then I'm like okay so I gotta go look back at what I put in 5's what I put in 6's and I'm like, it fits more with my fives. It does. And I'm like, just like what I said earlier, you know, it's just a little too long. Some things could be cut out. Um, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of confusion, like, which storyline they're really trying to go with fully. Um, some of the music was, like, not great. Especially didn't fit well with some of the scenes. And um, the CGI. I'll say that. But I did like the acting. I did. I did. So there's some nice cinematography here. I'll say that. But yeah, it's a five for me. Okay. And 
for me, I did like it a little bit more. Um, I'm giving it a seven. I had some of the similar issues you did, you know, the length. For me, it wasn't like terribly long. Like some things we've seen are terribly long. Like even if they're not long movies, just feel terribly long. Like this one, it kept getting to parts. Like right when I was starting to feel like it was getting long, it would get to part that would like kind of bring it back in and gather my interest a lot again. So it was long. Don't get me wrong, but there was definitely parts that could have been cut out, but I felt like for the most part, it wasn't terrible. CGI. Um, also, I kind of noticed it, it felt like a 90s movie for us. <laughs> it really had that feeling to it, and I feel like that's probably why I liked it so much, is because I love 90s movies, even though some of them are terrible. Well, most of them are terrible, <laughs> but it's just like a nostalgia thing because, you know, growing up in the 90s. Yeah. Um, music was kind of iffy. Like the parts that went really well with the movie were great, but then when there was stuff that wasn't making sense. Uh, I really liked the acting in this, though. And I really liked the story with just the friends. I could have done without the flashback parts and, like, the movie building. Like, if they were just going and doing the friends part, like, she had just went over there. And, like, she said she was doing the movie. And then that was, like, something she was doing. But we didn't really focus on that. Then I probably would have liked this better. But the movie part actually helped build the characters, too, a little bit. So... But, you know, this just for me fit in with my sevens a little bit better than my sixes or my eights. Because I was looking at them all and I was like, you know, it just fits right there in, in the sevens for me. So, that's what I'm giving it. So, our next film is Wild Tales from 2014. And I believe that that is a... It's in Spanish, and it technically it's from Argentina. Oh, so it's an Argentinian movie. It's the first one we've had. Is it in Spanish or Portuguese? It's in Spanish. Okay, because I know some places in Argentina they speak Portuguese. Yeah, this is, so. it's in Spanish. I checked it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I watched the trailer, too. I'm like, oh, I know that language. That's Spanish all the way. <laughs> cool. So, Wild Tales, coming up next from 2014 from Argentina yeah. in Spanish. So that'll be fun. Our event coming up um, is our holiday event, of course. And it will be out at the end of December. This will be Babes in Toyland from 1986 and Krampus from 2014 were the movies I picked. And I picked Santa Claus is Coming to Town from 1970 and The Nightmare Before Christmas from 1993. And The Nightmare Before Christmas is our 100th episode. That's not counting bonus episodes or um, premium episodes. So that will be fun. That whole event there. I think we got some good movies. Oh, I think so. And if you would like to become a premium member, you just go to our website, catandjusttalkthebest.podbean.com. And you go over to the right, scroll down a little bit. There are two options. The first is a dollar a month. You'll get uncut episodes, early release episodes, and a special monthly episode. For $5 a month, you'll get all of that. Plus, you'll be able to join us for a movie of your choice every 50 movies. Or you could pick an event that we don't already have a guest for. So right now, the only one we have guests for is Harry Potter. So you could pick any of the other events you would like to do if you're a $5 premium member. Our next special episode for premium members for this month, actually coming out the same day as this episode, is our Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal coverage. We'll be talking about them. If you're not a premium member, that will be available for just a dollar, if you would like to get it. And all that that does is help us out pay for the website, because the website's not free. So, um, if you'd like to help us with that, that would be great. If you can't support us in that way, then you can always leave ratings and reviews. Helps us get more listeners and know how we are doing and what you guys like. You can talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
or you can email us. All of those links are in the show notes. Our music is by Audio Binger. You can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. And thank you guys so much for listening. Till next week with Wild Tales. Bye. Bye.